Joining me this week is the Institute of Public Affairs, John Roscombe. John, thank you for joining me. And I've got to say, I am enjoying the left's uh, ongoing meltdown over Twitter. Basically, they cannot cope with an even playing field. They cannot cope with their ideological opponents being silenced. And, um, you know, Elon Musk is bringing a little bit of transparency and balance to the side. And we've got now here pretend rocket man, Elton John, throwing his toys out of the cot. Uh, because a real rocket man is running the joint. He tweeted, all my life I've tried to use music to bring people together, yet it saddens me to see how misinformation is now being used to divide our world. I've decided to no longer use Twitter, given their recent change in policy, which will allow misinformation to flourish unchecked. Goodness me, there's more misinformation in that tweet than I care to see. What, what do you make of that? I mean, Musk has cleaned up many elements of Twitter. I've got to say that the fact that he's tackled the child porn issue and made a real difference there is something that should be com uh, commended, and yet the, it's just condemnation from the left. Well, it's exactly as you said. They don't like an even playing field. And when Elton John talks about misinformation, mm. I'm thinking he's just picked up the Marxist playbook. Look, <laughs> what Galileo said was misinformation until it was proved right. Anything that the left disagree with, that they don't like being debated, is misinformation, is racist, is hateful. They're all the code words that we know it's censorship. And if Elton John wants to leave Twitter, go ahead. I've got to say, I didn't, I'm on Twitter all the time. I didn't even know he had an account, so I don't know what's happening there. And you know what? His good mate, Prince Harry... He's also been talking a lot about the threat of misinformation. Oh, Rita, and... that's three hours of my life I'm not going to get back. I watched well, it with the family. Well, that's why you should watch Paul Murray and I. To see Reaction what it was about. Video. Only 17 minutes and it gets you all, all a very good picture of what, what you don't want to be enduring for three hours. But Prince Harry, the 63-second the promo they released for that doco reality series had four or five verifiable errors in it. So maybe misinformation. Elton... Misinformation should be talking to <laughs> Harry about misinformation, not Elon Musk. But staying with Elon Musk, he has inspired possibly the unfunniest skit ever. This is from Saturday Night Live. Elon, why does he own all the stuff? Why does he have to run Tesla and Twitter? Was outer space not enough? And Hitler... Did Hitler come back? That is, that is enough. It only got worse from there, goodness me. Now let's hear from a Rutgers University professor, Brittany Cooper. She's just indulging in some casual hate speech. I think that white people are committed to being villains in the aggregate, right? The real sort of issue here, and I, you know, I've heard people sort of say it, is one, I think that white people viscerally fear. It's not that white people don't know right what they have done they know they fear that there is no other way to be human but the way in which they are human which is to so you know like you talk to white people and whenever you, you really want to have a reckoning about it they say stuff like you know it's just human nature if y'all had all of this power you would have done the same thing right and it's like, no, that's what white humans did. White human beings thought there's a world here and we own it. Prior to them, black and brown people have been sailing across oceans, interacting with each other for centuries without total subjugation, domination, and colonialism. Uh, let's just talk about how historically illiterate that is. I mean, this is supposed to be a professor. How does she not know that slavery has existed for thousands of years. I mean, how do you think the pyramids were built? Well, and they let her loose on children. Yeah. So there's so much wrong with that, Rita. It's not just anyone ranting. It is a university professor... At a, professor. ..at a prestigious university in the US that is educating children. Um, what she says about race uh, is terrible. Mm. The idea that you put all people of a skin colour into a category the way she does is the very worst form of discrimination that, that we've seen. Uh, and then, as you say, she is completely a historical. What she was doing then was spreading disinformation. It's, it's, and it, it actually got 
worse. She actually talked about, um, you know, it was basically, to me, genocidal talk about how whiteness needs to end and how we've got to take these uh, mother effers out. Like, it, it, you, you would not talk about any group of people in those terms without losing your job, possibly facing charges of inciting violence, but... You're a professor at a prestigious university. You can but say that about white people. We're normalising it. Oh. And because we hear this more and more and more, um, it's being let go. If something like that had been said 10 years ago, there would have been uproar. Now we take it for granted and laugh, laugh at it, except it's serious. Oh, it is just so ugly. I'm going to play you just a little bit more of her and talking about um, just how she feels about... Uh, you know, these are some of her students. Some of her students are going to be white. Can you imagine how they feel and how they're treated in a classroom? They are so corrupt. You know, their thinking is so morally and spiritually bankrupt about power that they can't let, you know, they fear viscerally, existentially letting go of power because they cannot imagine that there is another way to be. It is either that you dominate or you are dominated. And isn't it sad that 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 is spiritually who they are and that they can't imagine a sort of more expansive notion of the world. Again, she's talking about white people there. I mean, it's just gross. But then there's also the self-loathing white lefties. Uh, they're just as uh, crazy. They're regularly losing it online. This one claims that there are no good white people. You're not one of the good white people. There are no good white people. There are only anti-racist white people and racist white people. Stop congratulating each other. Stop separating us from the bad white people. Don't sit out there in comments and say, we don't claim them. We are them. We are them. We are the ones shooting up schools. We are the ones raping people. We are the ones enslaving people. We are. We're them. John, help me out. I mean, really. I don't think I can, Rita. That's so sad. Mm. And we can laugh at tenured professors at Rutgers, but what they say has consequences. And what was so difficult about that latest clip that you showed is that's what we now hear from young people. You go yes. to a climate change protest, you go to a BLM protest, and you've got 10-year-olds chanting things like that uncritically unthinking. That's the tragedy. When adults do it, it's one thing. Mm. But when it then permeates to young people, it's another thing entirely. And it's so tragic. And you ask yourself, have we become so wealthy? Have we become so indulgent? Are we so complacent that we allow this to happen? Yeah. And you know what? None of those people ever look particularly happy, the, the self-loathers. But what has the left provided? What, how, That's right. It's, uh, not a ha it's not happy. It's not improving. No. It's not progress. It's a form of self-hatred, as That's it. And to inflict that on children, to have this doctrine uh, pumped into their heads from primary school all the way to university, just think about the impact that ha that has on them. Now, just quickly, I'm going to show you something from the Washington Post. Remember when they were a reputable news site? Now they produce headlines like this. Shark Week lacks diversity, overrepresents men named Mike. This is a real headline. I'm not making this up. Scientists say, of course, there's always a scientist say. Uh, and the article goes on to note that researchers say discoveries programming overwhelmingly featured white men as experts while emphasising negative messaging about sharks. Yes, that's where we are. John Roskam, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your insights. Thanks, Rita.